Hey, this is Art from My New Microphone. Compression is an invaluable tool in the Mixing Engineer's Toolbox, allowing us to decrease the dynamic range or compress the dynamic range of an audio signal, whether that be in an individual track, a bus, or even the mix bus. Compression works to decrease the dynamic range, that is the difference between the loudest part and the quietest part of an audio signal, by effectively attenuating that signal as it surpasses a set threshold level. Compression is often used to make a track's level more consistent or to glue several instruments together at the mix level. It can also be used to increase loudness of the track by reducing the peak levels and avoiding clipping. Parallel compression can be used to help thicken up certain tracks or buses in the mix. Serial compression can help us get different flavors of compression all at once and make each compressor work less hard to achieve more natural results. Sidechain compression can help with frequency masking and introduce interesting rhythmic and pumping elements into the mix. Compression can help us do a wide variety of things in the mix, but today I want to talk about how to use dynamic range compression to actually increase the dynamic range of our tracks within the mix. To understand how we can actually increase the dynamic range with a tool that is traditionally designed to decrease the dynamic range, we must take a look at the time variables or time parameters of compression. Compressors will have an attack time and a release time. The attack time of a compressor is the time it takes for that compressor to react or engage fully with the full ratio once the signal level driving the gain reduction circuit surpasses the set threshold. It's a rate of change where the compressor gradually reaches its full ratio over time. It's not a delay of action whereby the compressor will suddenly snap and engage to its full ratio instantaneously. The release time, on the other hand, is the amount of time it takes for the compressor to fully disengage once the signal level driving its gain reduction circuit falls down below the set threshold once again. Like the attack time, the release time is also a rate of change rather than a delay of action. So then, how can we use compression to actually increase the dynamic range of the audio that we are compressing? The simple answer to this is to use a slow attack time and a long release time. This can be best understood and demonstrated with very transient audio signals such as snare drums, and I will show you momentarily in my digital audio workstation how we can go about increasing the dynamic range with compression by using a snare drum track. If we imagine a snare drum, for example, and it's transient, we will have time before the snare hit where it's relatively quiet or not making any sound whatsoever, and then the snare drum will hit, there will be a big spike in audio, and then it will rapidly go back down to zero. Of course, there may be bleed in the snare drum mic, but I digress. So in this example of a snare drum, if we have a slow attack time, the compressor will react more slowly as that transient energy surpasses the set threshold. And some of that transient energy will actually pass through the compressor uncompressed. So at this moment, we actually have not clamped down on the very peak of the audio. So the compressor will reach its full ratio of compression sometime after the transient peak. And if we have a longer release time, once that transient signal goes back down below the set threshold, the compressor will take some time to actually stop compressing the signal. So we can imagine this scenario with the initial peak having the most energy being passed through the compressor without any attenuation. And then as the audio falls well below the set threshold, the compressor will still be reducing the gain of the signal. What we're left with is the same peak level at the highest point of the signal. However, the quietest part of the signal is now made even quieter as the compressor slowly disengages due to its longer release time. In effect, we have now increased the dynamic range of this transient signal's highest peak and lowest energy point. While this is best demonstrated and practiced with transient signals like snare drums, kick drums, and other percussion instruments, it can also play a more subtle role on more steady state audio, such as guitars, bass, vocals, and the like. So with that, let's hop into our digital audio workstation, and I will show you an example in real time of how we can go about increasing the dynamic range with a compressor. All right, here we are inside of Logic Pro, and I will show you how we can use compression to increase the dynamic range and I'll be looking specifically at the snare drum as an example to do so. Right here we have just drum multi-tracks. This is a pretty simple beat during the verse of one of my songs. And we've got kick, snare, two overheads, and two toms. These are all at Unity. It's not mixed. These are just the rough recordings. But uh, I'll play this through to get an idea of the beat, and then we will hop into using compression to increase the dynamic range specifically of the snare drum here. <laughs> 
All right, so pretty simple beat. Let's go ahead. I will solo my talk back and solo the snare drum here. And what we're going to do is have a quick listen to just the snare drum and you will hear the bleed in the snare drum microphone. It's important that I use a track that has significant bleed in it for this example, because it is more analogous to an actual mix where there's always something going on. I could show you just using a snare sample. However, the snare sample will have a point of zero amplitude either before or after. And so the lowest part of the dynamic range will always be zero. And so the only way to increase the dynamic range in this case would be to turn it up, which doesn't really give us a good example of how compression can be used to actually increase the dynamic range. I hope that makes sense. So let's have a listen to the snare drum here and get a better idea of what we are working with. I'll turn that up. So there's a lot of bleed in this track because it's a snare drum microphone, so it's picking up all the other drums, all the sound of the other drums along with the snare. But if we were to zoom in on the waveform, it's obvious that the snare is the loudest and most transient part of this signal. So let's go ahead and insert our compressor here. I'm just going to use Logic's stock compressor, and I'm going to compress it very heavily, perhaps much more heavily than I would in a mix, but I just want to make this as obvious as possible to show how we can increase the dynamic range with compression. So I will loop the verse and just listen to the snare track and make adjustments here as we see fit. I will be switching between the meter here, which will show us the amount of gain reduction, and the graph here, which shows us the compression curve along with the gain reduction uh, in this graph right here. So to begin with, I'm going to turn off auto gain and I'm going to turn the knee all the way down to make it a hard knee. What a hard knee does is it makes a compressor act as we typically think of a compressor acting. Once the signal surpasses the threshold, the compressor begins acting. Whereas if we had a soft knee, it's not so obvious where the exact threshold is as the compressor begins acting before the threshold is met and then kind of smooths out to reach its full ratio afterwards. So to make things even more obvious, we're going to go with a hard knee here. And with that, let's listen and make our adjustments here. I'm going to turn up my headphones. So let's get some amount of compression. I'm going to go with a very obvious, uh, very high ratio here. Let's try 10. And what I want to do is I'll max out the attack time here to make it as obvious as possible. And I'll set the release time so that the compressor is just disengaging as the next hit uh, happens. This is very easy to do on the backbeat and less easy to do when there's a lot of snare work, which is why I chose the verse to have this very obvious example. Sixteen hundred milliseconds. Let's A B this and make sure that our makeup gain is set so that we have roughly the same level whether the track is or sorry, whether the compressor is on or off. So that sounds about the same level to me. And notice as the snare drum hits, it takes a little bit of time for the compressor to actually act. And we can see that in the graph as well. We can see the transients right here. And then the gain reduction is actually lagging behind it. The threshold is so low at this point that we've kind of lost our graph over here, but we know what's going on with the hard knee. So obviously there is a bit of transient shaping, actually pretty significant transient shaping going on if we listen back. <laughs> 
when the compressor's on, it really snaps down on the sustain and ringing of the snare. And again, I wanted to make this obvious just to really show you how compression can be used to increase the dynamic range. So what we're going to do now is bounce this in place, make sure that it's on a new track. We're going to leave the source or the original. We are not going to bypass the effects because we want a signal that is compressed to compare the original against. And we'll go ahead and include the audio tail right here. So not normalizing, which would bring the peaks up to zero. Again, we want to ensure that they are as similar as possible to judge the difference in dynamic range. So here we go. All right, so let's take a brief look at our settings here before we take a look. We've maxed out the attack time here. We've got a release set so that the compressor disengages just before the next snare hit. We've got makeup gain set so that the peaks are at the same perceived loudness. We've got a high ratio and a very low threshold to make the compression very aggressive and obvious. And as well, we have a hard knee right here. So we'll close out the compressor right now and have a look at these two files. So they look pretty much the same, but if we zoom in here, we can see that the compressed signal here has a greater peak value. So the loudest part of these transients is actually greater here, even though they were at the same perceived loudness. This is a discussion for another video perhaps, but psychoacoustically speaking, the greater the sustain of a track, the louder it will be perceived. So where we really clamped down on the sustain in this compressed version of the track, we actually have the same perceived loudness, but because the sustain is not nearly as high, the actual peak is greater, technically speaking. So we have a higher peak. So if everything else was the same, then this higher peak would mean that we have increased the dynamic range. And if we go down here, we can see, and I'll blow this up a little bit, you can see that as the release time is happening, that we have slightly less signal on the bottom than we do on the top. And this can really be seen over here in the tail end. Let's really drag these out to see. I'll get rid of this mixer. And again, this is very subtle and this is a very extreme example, but I just wanna show you the theory behind how compression can actually increase the dynamic range. So at the tail end of the snare here, we see that the compressed signal has lower levels than the original, but at the very peak right here, we have higher levels at the compressed signal than we do at the original. So not only is the new compressed signal louder at the loudest peaks, but it's also quieter at the quietest sections. And that is, in essence, how we can use compression to increase the dynamic range of our audio. So we can extend this information to entire mixes or individual tracks or loops or what have you to increase the dynamic range and also shape the transients of whatever it is we are working on. All right, let's hop out of Logic Pro. In addition to compression, there are other dynamics processors that we can use to increase the dynamic range in our mixes. One of those dynamic range processes is expansion, which works similarly to compression, except while compression will reduce the gain of a signal as it surpasses a set threshold, expansion will reduce the gain as a signal level drops below a set threshold. I'm actually using expansion on my microphone right here that I am speaking into as a way to reduce a little bit of the background noise in my home studio. Another processor worth checking out, which is a little bit more involved and time consuming to explain is transient shaping. I would encourage you to check out transient shapers for yourself, whether that is a third party plugin or the stock transient shaper that comes with your DAW if applicable. And perhaps I will do a video on transient shaping in the future. So there you have it, how we can actually increase the dynamic range with compression and use it to help shape the transients in our mixes. As always, I'd like to thank you for being here. If you liked the video, hit that like button down below and be sure to check out the description box for more resources at my new microphone. I will also on this end screen put up a few other videos having to do with compression here on the my new microphone YouTube channel that I think are valuable and worth checking out. So click on one of these videos next and I will see you in the next one.